Hi, today we are going to perform the analysis of uh, some of the basic experimental designs which falls under the category of single factor experiments and have a huge application in agricultural sciences and forestry. Uh, the two important designs which are which we are going to demonstrate by means of this uh, studio utilizing a very famous uh, library which is known as library DOE bio research in which uh, all basic experimental designs whether they are single factor or some of the basic factorial experiments including triplet plot design they can be analyzed and the, the basic transformations and adjustments that are required as far as these experimental designs are concerned and as far as the basic assumptions of analysis of presence uh, are concerned uh, they can be done uh, utilizing this library uh, so we will be analyzing uh, the data through crd and another data separate data for rcbd uh, so in order to perform the analysis we require the data set for both these two designs and in case of our studio we can import the data by means of uh, the default function that is known as a read dot table or we can simply import the data set if it is available on your desktop or in any drive we can simply click on this import then we have to choose the format since uh, my data set is uh, stored in excel file so i will click on this excel then i will click on this browse then I have to see where my data set is since it is stored on desktop and the name of the folder is YouTube and I will click on the CRD then open then it will get displayed within fractions of second then I will click on this import so my data is imported here uh, and similarly for RCBD I will use the same steps import data set and click on this and click again on this browse and I will click on the desktop since my data set is here I will use the same steps and again I have to wait for some few seconds and click on this import uh, so both my data sets for both these designs is recalled as you can see uh, for CRD I have three columns the first one is replications treatments then we have a response variable that is yield and similarly for RCBD we have the data uh, we have the first column which is replication then treatment and yield uh, so we will start analyzing our first experimental design that is CRD since the name of my data set is CRD so if I will write this function names capital CRD okay then press on enter so i have three columns that is replication treatment and a response variable and i am interested to seek the comparison among the treatments and in this data set i have almost seven treatments and i want to evaluate whether they have there exists a significant difference across these uh, seven treatments or not so in order to analyze this I have to use a default function small crd it is an inbuilt function as you can see here is a function gives the analysis of variance the coefficient of determination for the fitted model uh, and it tests the normality assumption for errors or residuals rather which is very much required then within the brackets I have to name I have to write the name of my data set the name of my data set is crd and I have to put the square brackets and within those square brackets I have to mention the position of my response variable I will write 3 here why because the position of my response variable is 3 first second first column second column and third column that is why 3 followed by comma then I will write CRD again the name of my data set followed by this dollar sign I will click on this treatment since I want to evaluate all these treatments comma one now what is the significance of this one this is here we'll click here on the CRD and you can see it is for multiple comparison tests so in order to perform the post hoc analysis we have to mention whether we are using least significant difference whether we are doing Duncan's multiple range test or Tukey's HSD test and we have to be very uh, uh, clear about 
our goal in this design or any kind of a design whether we go for lsd that is least significant difference or dmrt so we have to first see whether our experiment is planned pair or unplanned pair if there is a presence of some control in our treatment set then we have to use uh, lsd if there is no control in our experiment which we are conducting then we have to go for unplanned unplanned pair experiment that is for uh, dmrt then once we have uh, once we have fitted all our codes uh, as far as this uh, experimental design is concerned we'll click on this enter the results will be displayed here as you can see here uh, the response variable is yield and the, research, the ANOVA table is also here and you can see the data set we have seven treatments and for this uh, source of variation of treatments are concerned we have six uh, degrees of freedom for treatments in seven minus one is six we have sum of squares also mean sum of squares also and we have a significant f value that means these treatments seven treatments are significantly different from each other the as you can see here the treatment means of one or more treatments are not same so multiple comparison test we can say the post hoc analysis can be performed now a very important assumption about analysis of variance is about uh, errors uh, we can say uh, the errors should be normally distributed or the distribution of uh, errors it should be uh, normal and for that we have a test which is known as no shapiro wilk test it uh, it has an hypothesis it has a null hypothesis that the errors are normally distributed and you can see uh, the p values for this test is uh, uh, greater than 0 0.05 so we have a non significant test here which is a clear indication that the errors are normally distributed that means normality assumption is not violated then we have a mean square or we can say the model error we have the overall degrees of freedom then we have the grand mean here we have coefficient of variation here we have t value here and the more important on which this post hoc analysis is done that is lsd which is known as least significant difference and commonly it is uh, mentioned in textbooks or uh, some of the research say it is critical difference but it is least significant difference and you can see treatment 2 is significantly different from 7 treatment 7 as both of these treatments the difference between these two treatments uh, is greater uh, than this least significant difference value and the thumb rule is this if the uh, difference between two means is greater than the value of the least significant difference then we can say those the pair uh, of that uh, the, both these three treatments are said to be significant now if we will perform the analysis of rcbd again we have three columns in case of rcbd so we will perform the analysis in case of this so we will do analysis again utilizing the same steps we will first write the default function rcbd then the name of the data set then the position of the variable then again we have to write the name of our data set followed by the treatments which we want to evaluate since we have one more source of variation in case of rcbd that is replication due to the introduction of uh, a principle of experimental designs uh, see uh, one thing is very important here crd and rcbd in case of crd no blocking principle is used since we are dealing with a homogeneous material but whenever we are applying rcbd we are applying in those conditions when we have a heterogeneous experimental material and crd is, is the only design in which only two basic principles of experimental designs are used that is randomization and replication but as far as rcbd is concerned all the three basic principles of experimental design are used uh, which are randomization replication and local control so that is why the addition of this source of variation is here uh, and again we are seeking interested to do the post hoc analysis in terms of least significant difference we will simply highlight this or we can put the cursor here and click on this run option and again you can see the results are visible here like in the previous design we have an ANOVA table for this we had four replications here we can see we had four replications here 
and we had uh, almost six treatments in case of RCBD and you can see again uh, the errors are normally distributed because we have a non-significant p-value for this Shapiro guilt test and we can see here uh, by means of least significant difference we can test which of the treatment peers are significantly different from each other these two experimental designs are very important and if you are conducting an experiment in lab if you are conducting an experiment in greenhouse if you are conducting your experiment in polyvax uh, then uh, you can use completely randomized design and if you are conducting your experiment in uh, ex uh, in fields in open condition then rcbd is very much uh, recommended but one condition for rcbd is that if you are performing in the fields for that uh, fertility gradient should be identified and it should be moving only in one direction and so the direction and identification of fertility gradient is very important in case of randomized complete clock design and one important thing about rcbd is that the block size is equal to the number of treatments and we have a fixed condition for how many number of treatments we can use in rcbd uh, some say it's 12 and another say 20 because there's a reason behind this if we increase the number of treatments the block size will get increased so we will not be able to maintain the homogeneity within that block uh, for that, if we have a large number of treatments, we want to evaluate them, then we have to move to the incomplete uh, block designs. I uh, hope uh, this basic demonstration about uh, the basic single factor experimental uh, designs, experiment, single factor experiment, sorry, uh, might be helpful to all of you and uh, you can perform on your own. Thank you very much.